I can hear the rain droplets. <laughs> Welcome back to another video, guys. Today we have a very special guest, the first female on my channel, Jin. Um, and she has this Cannondale Super 6 Evo High mod. Um, I think this is the second Cannondale, carbon Cannondale on my channel. Uh, Jean, thank you so much for coming and I appreciate you picking me up from, from my house there. It was, it was a pretty far ride, so thank you so much and thanks for letting me film uh, in your house. Unfortunately, we wanted to film outside but it was uh, raining. I think you guys can hear the water droplets. So, Jin, being the first female on the channel, I got to ask you this question. Uh, how does it feel generally to be a female cyclist? Is there any stigma around you know cycling? And is it like it's a male predominantly a male uh, dominant uh, sport, right? Yeah. So so how, how's how's the journey like so far? I think the bulk of it is um, sometimes having to prove yourself that you can actually keep up with the guys. Um, most of them are actually quite kind they think girls are slower and they slow down for you and then when you actually overtake them then <laughs> um, yeah so uh, I've ridden with groups where they're kind enough to let me pull and I've ridden with groups where um, if I come up in front they take it as a challenge and then they they kind of leapfrog ahead so I'm like okay sure I'll sit on your tail and draft no save me the energy yeah. but I think on the whole the community is quite welcoming. Um, if the guys are chauvinists, it's okay. Enjoy it. It's your right as a female um, because they do make a good draft and they, well, you know, at the end of the ride, if they're tired and you're not, it's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I think as a female, we need more females on the road. And actually, we are seeing more thanks to COVID. Um, and the girls can go fast yeah. yeah not only we need more females on the roads we need more females on this channel it's <laughs> you know my youtube statistics there are 100 percent males there are no females at all watching this channel you were telling me uh on the way here that you're a triathlete um can you tell us more about that and how long have you been riding yeah i like to say try athlete i try to be the athlete <laughs> Uh, I picked up triathlons in 2019 um, uh, by accident. So I started road biking in 2018 and then my husband kind of gave me the challenge of uh, taking part in a try. And our first try was a 70.3, which is a half Ironman distance. So I had to train up for it. Uh, it's a 90k bike, uh, but before that you do a 1.9 kilometer swim and then you finish off with a half marathon, which is a 21 kilometer run. So that uh, that first race was more of a let's see if I can do it and I survive. Um, my target was to finish in seven hours. I did it in I think 6:08 or 6:09, which was decent. And then I got hooked that night. We booked our second race, <laughs> which was like I think maybe two or three months later. And then yeah, actually I forgot as well that uh, that weekend after I came back from Thailand, I had booked myself into the power man which was a run bike run so i kind of sheepishly told my husband on the way home uh on the plane i said like, uh this weekend i need to go malaysia <laughs> and he was for what i need to race again <laughs> he's like why did you book it back to back i said i i thought it was march and it was february when we did the 70.3 i said i thought it was march i didn't know march was so close to february because february only has 28 days <laughs> So yeah, he was nice enough to arrange transport for a friend and myself. We raced that and uh, yeah, actually we came in, we both came in second in our age group. That friend and myself, we both came in second in our age group. So it was a good trip. Uh, yeah, it was it was nice. <laughs> so let's talk more about the bike. So Cannondale Super 6 Evo High Mod. I, uh, excuse me for my lack of knowledge of Cannondale. So a High Mod, I'm assuming this is the high end, well, high, high Mod, high end of the Cannondale. And um, is it something like a specialized in the S-Works where the high mod is the S-Works version? If you want me to be really honest, my guess is yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've wondered as well. Unfortunately, I haven't had time to actually dig it out. But uh, yeah, my guess would be yes. I'm guessing it's either the carbon uh, quality or something about the overall make that makes it a, a better, uh, well, a better option than just the, the normal one. Before you got this Cannondale, what bikes were you riding previously? I started off with a BMC road machine 
and uh, unfortunately the size was a little bit too small for me so the shop had recommended a 47 but when I actually got on it uh, we realized that even with the seat post fully raised um, it wasn't an optimal pedal uh, well like for pedal for cadence so uh, in the end we switched out uh, my husband got me a time machine road um, mod so we bought the frame ported the parts over and then um, after that uh, just recently sold that and bought this one because I was riding my husband's Cannondale for a little bit and I was like, hey, she's quite nice. <laughs> Can you run us through the bike? Uh, what components do you have on the bike? Okay, so I'm really lucky here. Um, on this bike, I've got the latest 12-speed Dura Ace. Um, my saddle's in s uh, I didn't actually decide particularly on this saddle. I just, after the first two rides on my road machine, um, I was riding on a physique saddle that had no cutout and it really hurt. So I told my husband, I need something with a cutout. And then next, the next time, yeah, he, he was like, oh, okay, I got you a saddle and this is it. So I was like, okay, fingers crossed. I hope it works because apparently it was quite expensive. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, so we've got the Dura Ace 12 speed. We've got the, um, well, sort of integrated handlebar system. It's uh, Cannondale's hologram system. And then, uh, sorry, Cannondale's knot system. And then um, the bottle cages are the Silka titaniums. Um, oh, my wheel set. I like my wheel set. It's a uh, six, uh, no, 4550 Princeton. With yes. Hubs. Yes. Oh, yes, with Chris King helps. Uh, uh, apparently, that's really good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've got the Asioma Favaro um, power meter. So it makes it really easy because if you change bike, you can just port the power meter over and you don't have to worry. So, uh, yeah, I use uh, look pedals, but apparently these come in Shimano's now. Yeah, so it's quite good. More about the geometry of the frame. This is a 51 cm, as I can see from the label. How tall are you? Okay, so I'm 165 uh, in terms of height, but my inseam is, I think, Eight? yes, probably about 80 or 81. So, which is why the 51 works for me. Yeah, I got long, supposedly long legs, short body. <laughs> I always like to pick this out on my, my, my guest. Where is the oversized pulley? <laughs> it's on my shift. Oh. <laughs> so there is one. <laughs> so do you think um, the oversized pulley makes a difference? Honestly, I have not ridden the shift enough to say that it really does. Um, the funny thing is, uh, it was put on there because, uh, yeah, somebody asked me, do you want one? And I went, sure, why not? Uh, not knowing how much it costs, of course. And then, um, it's nice to ride, but I haven't ridden it enough to actually tell the difference. What is the weight of the bike? I think it was about 7.5. Yeah, the last, when I left the shop, it was 7.5. Where, where do you get this bike and does it come in a complete bike uh, sale? Or? So I got this from uh, One Bike Asia and uh, what they did, was they actually bring in the Princeton wheels so I chose the Princeton wheels to go with these and um, we bought it I bought it as a frame uh, a frame set and then I told him put on Princeton uh, I want my power meter back on I would like the 12 speed group set and then it came to, I was about to leave the shop and I said, hey, I got no bottle cage. <laughs> okay. So he went, you want a bottle cage that you can pass down for generations? <laughs> so I was like, sure, why not? He said, take the Silka Titanium. I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> so that's how we ended up with these. Uh, okay. right. Yeah, upwards of 15K. Yes, <laughs> let's just put it as that. Usually when I interview my male uh, guest, they are very afraid to tell me the price because if you have seen my other videos, uh, they, the, the, their wives don't know the price of the bike. Do you tell her the full price of the bike or was it discounted? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we will just leave it there. Cut, cut. Uh, I agree, I agree. So, let's say... Uh, <laughs> Princeton 4540 behind you. That's my wife, so don't let my wife know. <laughs> she asked me how much is the wheel next. What is the cost that you told your wife? Actually, I did. 
<laughs> basket, Sam. But this, in this case, your husband is a cyclist, you are a cyclist, so I guess it's a pretty much transparent relationship, right? <laughs> and on the way here, you were telling me you ride, you like to ride long distances. Um, how is it like riding long distance uh, on this bike? It's actually surprisingly comfortable. So I've done um, 200 or 200 ish on the Time Machine Road, and I've done uh, 200 and a recent Audex 300 on this one. Um, the bike itself. It holds its speed well, it's nice, it's light enough, you know, on we had to climb Faber, we had to do Mandai, we had to go oh, well there was like a thousand plus elevation on that particular Audex three hundred and it it was good. I didn't have any issues with it, I didn't I wasn't crawling. Um, the only thing I would change would be the saddle. At two fifty the saddle started to hurt or I started to hurt <laughs> because of the saddle yeah, yeah so it, it's like uh, I didn't want to have any more contact with my saddle from 250 onwards <laughs> in your previous bikes was it a Dura Ace as well and so this is a new one uh, since this is uh, relatively new in the market do you think it's worth the upgrade so someone from it from the old Dura Ace to the new Dura Ace if I say that I could climb Faber on the big chain ring uh, on the steep side of Faber, would that would that answer the question? <laughs> yeah. So basically, that 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 kind of settled it for me. I went up Seba, uh, I went up Faber on the steep side, uh, stuck to the big chain ring throughout, and I was like, hey, this is fun. So it wasn't like you know my legs were not screaming. I wasn't about to fall off the bike, and yeah. So I think that 12 speed really does make a difference. Right. And I think cosmetically, the difference, I mean, obviously from the, the obvious, the it's a wireless system now, right? And also the, the hoods, it's much more chunkier here, right? So it looks more like a SRAM. And also the uh, this, this buttons here, it's much more differentiated now that there's a bit of groove over here. Are there female bike sizes? Uh, and this, I'm assuming it's a... Uh, there is, it's not a female size, right? Yeah. So, um, how, how do you get your bike fit? Do you do you go for a bike fitter, or how does that work? I actually did a bike fit with Louis, uh, Tim Timothy at Louis, and uh, that was with my road machine. So back then, um, I think even right from the start, the frames that I got were well either male specific or unisex. So I never had an issue looking for a female sized bike because I'm not I'm not very petite um, but I do know that for example some of my more petite friends they they buy live because the geometry suits them uh, in terms of height in terms of the overall size of the frame and the reach um, yeah so I, I guess I'm really lucky for this one I didn't really need a female specific bike um, but there are and there are some good ones so so it's not like oh female specific it goes slower rubbish <laughs> it's it's all in the legs <laughs> yeah so you're right uh, I, the only female bike that I know is the Giant Live which is the female specific lineup from Giant um, wow the, the rain noise is really loud but let's let's just pull through um, so in terms of a, a male and a female specific bike what are the main differences I'm assuming it is a top tube and it's much more compact am I am I right typically this up here this uh, top tube it not only is it um, more compact for female specific bikes as far as I know um, there is also a gentle slant down okay so it's actually easier for the ladies to when they when they stride over the bike uh, when they sit astride they actually don't have this top tube pressing up against them um, other than that I know some of the bikes if you buy it in a full bike they actually have a sh option of a shorter crank length so 170 is usually the standard um, there are ladies who have had to look for a 160 or even a 155 which it tends to be very rare but I think if you if you put it together in a whole female specific bike you might be able to find that instead So this is the Instagram Q&A. If you guys want to ask your questions, follow me on Instagram and you'll get the chance to ask. So Jin, are you ready? We have uh, not many questions, but I think they are pretty unique questions. So the first one, how is the new Dura Ace? Um, like I said, if climbing is a benchmark, I think it's beautiful. Um, 
I well, I could climb on the big chain ring uh, without having to switch out. And okay, I switch. Obviously, I have to switch the gears, but no, I can stay on the big chain ring, do the steep side. I'm happy. Legs were not screaming. Yeah, I think it's a good change. Any enhancements in the performance of the saw tooth wheel design compared to a normal regular rim? Okay, so I used to run DT Swiss. Um, I think it was the ERC 1100. And I'm not quite sure the depth, probably about 40. Uh, so similar to this, but I find that this holds speed better. Um, yeah, it, on a flat, this one, this one rides like a dream. How does the Super 6 EVO ride in comparison to other the bikes that you have ridden? So, um, first bike was a road machine, endurance bike, very comfortable, but um, I would say a bit sluggish overall, okay? So it's, it's a nice comfy ride, it probably can go on for hours and hours, but uh, not as, uh, well, I would say it doesn't go as fast, on, or maybe my legs weren't as fast back then. Um, then the road machine, aero bike, I thought it was the best bike in the world until I met this and then, <laughs> yes, uh, life changed because this one climbs, this one goes fast on the flats. It's really one of the best all-round bikes that I've ridden. The answers are pretty much similar. Everyone I've asked, right, uh, that the current bike that they're riding, how does it compare? They all say, yeah, yeah, it's the best and everything. So, <laughs> sorry, what was the pre road machine, right? Yeah. And then now it's this. What if I swapped it around? You rode the Cannondale first and then the road machine. Would you have, would your answer still be the same that this one rides better than the road machine? Okay, depending, road machine or time machine road. Yeah. So if I switch this out with the road machine, um, I think it would be similar, but I would think that because this one's lighter, it climbs better. Um, if I switch this out with the time machine road, I would probably miss the responsiveness of this one. So I think Time Machine Road holds its speed on a flat beautifully. Um, but when it comes to a climb, there's a little bit of inertia at the start to on the, uh, as you build the climb. But other than that, it's down to the legs or so. So on, as the climb progresses, I think it's fine. But this one is lighter, it feels lighter, easier to pedal up. Yeah. Rarely see people ride this brand. Is it that the marketing is not as good as other brands? I think, um, I'm not sure about the marketing, but I've known Cannondale for more than 20 years already uh, because this was back when my sister was doing triathlons, my husband was cycling. Um, yeah, we're familiar with the Cannondale. And I guess, yeah, they don't really market that much, but it doesn't mean it's not a good bike. Uh, considering it's still around, people are still buying it now. Um, I, it doesn't really need to make a big splash in terms of its name to be a good bike. And Cannondale, for those who don't know, it's an American brand. Are they made in America or are they assembled in America? Would you know? It, honestly, this one, I suspect is assembled in America. <laughs> yeah, I suspect. I mean, uh, given given what the world has come to now, I, I wouldn't put my money to say that it's made in America. Yeah, actually, I haven't actually checked. Um, and actually, fun fact, uh, Cervelo just bought over Cannondale. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, what so, yes, very recent. So, Cervelo just bought over Cannondale. Uh, I think we're going to see something interesting in the works in the upcoming year. How do you even afford these bikes? I tried to sell my children, but <laughs> that didn't work. <laughs> Um, I work very hard, yes. Um, I work two jobs. <laughs> Look fast versus go fast. Which one is more important? Go fast is more important because when you go fast, you look fast. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Speaking of going fast, have you s smoked anyone on the road? <laughs> and what are their reactions? What are their reactions when they see, oh my god, a female just overtook me, right? Can I, can I get my friends to answer this? <laughs> Um, I, okay, I don't, I don't go all out to try and smoke people, okay? If I'm tailing behind you and I find that I'm going to fall off the bike, I will overtake. I'm very sorry. <laughs> you was know, telling me that she sets up the bikes for your, you and your husband when you go traveling. So shame on you guys who don't even know how to change a clincher tube. Uh. So Jin knows how to disassemble the bike and assemble the bike. So here's the next question. If it doesn't creep, it is not a true bottom BB30 bottom bracket. Um, okay, I like mine quiet. So, um, actually, 
I uh, this this funny thing about bo bottom bracket. So I I wouldn't say I'm an expert on them, but I recently uh, changed my husband's BB to a Hambini BB. Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install a Hambini bottom bracket. And it's it's is really nice. So I rode it and I was like, hey, there's a difference. And then he was like, ah yeah, you're just fooling yourself, la. So I was like. Okay, do I? I put on my bike. I put on my bike. So my bike was supposed to have one as well, but uh, because they ran out of stock, uh, we're currently using. I think we're using something from Shimano. It's not the. It's not the Cannondale one. We actually changed out from the original Cannondale. But yeah. So when the new Hambini comes in, I'm changing. If not, I'll steal his. <laughs> uh, yes, I think so. No creaking issues. No creaking issues. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Hambini bottom bracket, can we talk about that? Sure. Um, so Hambini bottom bracket, why a Hambini bottom bracket and oh, what's so special about Hambini's bottom bracket? Okay, to be very honest, I also didn't know what was so special about it and I just thought it was a funny name. <laughs> <laughs> so when uh, I think one bike brought it in and uh, Ned asked me, you know, would you like to change this uh, bottom bracket? I was like, huh? Okay. Uh, is it? Will it make the bike better? Will it go faster? He goes, well, faster depends on your legs, but better probably better performance. So then uh, I sent it in, changed it. He did a video. He showed me a video, and the thing was spinning like. Like as if you know you have like endless lubricant inside. And I was like, wow! <laughs> and uh, when you actually paddle it, it's smooth, yeah. smooth like butter. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, if you if you spend enough kilometers on the bike, you can feel the difference. Yeah. Actually, I think uh, bottom bracket is one of the most underrated upgrades yeah. that people do not make because yeah, it really does make a difference. And like your OSPW, right? You can just throw that in the bin. The the bottom bracket really makes a lot of difference. Uh, you know, before I, I really got into serious cycling, my friend got a bottom bracket, and I'm like, what, what the hell is a bottom bracket, and why do you pay so much for it, right? Because aesthetically, you can't see anything. But when I tried it, I was like, wow, it's life changing, man. So every time I get a new bike, the bottom bracket is the first thing that I'll swap out, uh, besides the wheels, obviously. Um, this is not a one piece handlebar, right? It's a stem and a handlebar that's a bit, right? Uh, or it's not. Yeah, it's not. Uh, so you can swap out yeah, this and it. Yeah, you can actually swap out the stem, and then if you need a longer stem or shorter stem, you can go accordingly. So I think mine is a hundred. My husband's is hundred and ten, if I remember correctly. I don't know, mine is 90, I can't remember, yeah. Why Shimano, not SRAM? Okay, so I run SRAM on my TT bike. Um, I actually have a preference for Shimano because I find the shifting is more sensitive. Uh, it shifts faster and you can, you can actually feel it. Um, yeah, it, it's just more responsive. Um, it's not that SRAM is not good. Uh, it's just, I find that there's, there's always like a slight... Mm slight delay yeah it's not, not not so significant that it will kill your race or whatever but I still find there's, there's a slight delay and I think for Shimano the once you charge it up it runs comfortably for three months without charging uh, SRAM that battery piece doesn't last as long so Usually what I do is, I can't remember, so I just charge it before every ride. <laughs> um, so a bit of closing remarks. Uh, I hope that I can uh, entice more female riders to come and, and showcase their bikes and tell their story. Um, how, how do you think, uh, a f how, how does a female cyclist get into cycling, right? I mean, sorry, it's a very sexist question, but I thought it's a bit irrelevant to talk about that uh, because it's more like a predominantly male sport. Uh, it can be a bit intimidating. So how do you gradually get into that sport? Um, okay, getting more women into cycling. I think in the first place, we have to look at how women start cycling. Um, we've got... The, well, the fair majority who start because their husbands introduced them to cycling, that, that's with me, uh, after complaining that, no, he's not at home. Instead of coming home, he buys me a bicycle. <laughs> but then, uh, so husbands beware, um, the wives might go out cycling more than you after this. Okay, uh, the other one is, I think, uh, triathletes, women who have p take up, uh, taken up triathlon, um, Cycling becomes part of the training program, and through whether they're cycling on the TT or road bike, you know they they gather friends, and then it becomes a community of their own. So we actually have a Singapore Women's Triathlon Club that um, 
a couple of friends and I are a big part of, and we've you know we've had more and more ladies join on, on Facebook, and they'll always ask like, "Oh, I'm new to Singapore, or I'm new to road biking. Uh, do you guys do that?" And we're like, "Yeah, sure. No, come come with us." So we do. We used to run this thing called the Pancake Rides because it's always nice to eat pancakes after a ride. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was like uh, pre-COVID, once a month, a uh, nice big group. We'll break up into smaller groups, have certain checkpoints, and then um, yeah, at the end of the ride, find out from these ladies how did they feel, was it too fast, too slow, and whether you know they'd like to do another ride. And from there, as they build their confidence, that's where they start cycling with maybe their husbands or other friends, and that's how the community grows. So the thing that I've heard from most women is that that either they're scared of the road because Singapore drivers are not the most friendly, which is true, but as a driver myself, I think it takes two to tango because I've seen some cyclists whom I honestly wish that they were not on the road. <laughs> and then I've seen disciplined ones where I'm happy to give them the entire lane give them enough room, you know, overtake at, at, with enough space, and everyone's happy. So it's, it's about how you manage it. So as a woman who's on the road for the first time, even a guy who's on the road for the first time, you know, if a car cuts in too close to you, you, you wouldn't even want to come out a second time to ride. So if you're more experienced and you're bringing someone out for the first time, think about what scares them. Um, don't, don't run the red light. Don't shout rolling when it's just turned yellow because they'll panic. They don't know what to do. Uh, don't suddenly change lane and say, okay, change. And then, no, everybody, it's like they, they start to panic. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I think you'll yeah, you have to edit. <laughs> yeah, so um, I think really look out for people whom you're bringing out on the roads for the first time. Uh, I brought my kids out and they, you know, we look out for them. We go at a slower pace. We make sure that we stay in a group. We're visible. Um, there's nothing wrong with with uh, trying cycling on the road. It's just that pick a time where traffic is not heavy. So it this applies to both women and men. If you are if you want to cycle on the road for the first time, pick a time where traffic's not heavy. Go with a like a good sized group that will look out for you. Experience enough people who look out for you. Go with sufficient sleep the night before so you're alert and awake when you're on the road and um, make sure you check your bike before you start the ride because I've gone out with people who get like punctures multiple times on the ride I'm like how come you're tired like that so I, I, I suspect maybe it could be something sharp in the tire itself so no matter how, how many times we change the tube for them <laughs> you're still going to get a puncture yeah so all these things add up and um whether male or female, I think it adds to the experience of the ride. And if it's a good experience, you get more people joining for sure. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jin. I think uh, we are over time. And <laughs> no, but, but it's, it's a great session. And uh, thank you so much for for you know uh, doing all this with me on YouTube. And I hope uh, really, I really hope I get more female riders on the channel. <laughs> and uh, Jin, thank you so much for coming out. And uh, that that is the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys next round. Bye bye.